Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have kind of an interesting problem. We're going to do it in two ways. In part A, we have a railroad car which is traveling to the right at two meters per second. Let's say it's rolling on a frictionless uh, track, so it's not gaining any speed, it's not slowing down, it's simply rolling at a constant speed. While it's raining, let's say that the total mass of the car is 10 tons or 10,000 kilograms, and let's say that over a period of time, the amount of rain entering the car is one ton, 1,000 kilograms of rain, what will be the final velocity in that case? The second case is where we have a small little outlet here, and so the train is still moving, or the railroad car is moving at two meters per second, and it's still raining, it collects the same amount of rain in the same amount of time, but now instead of the rain accumulating inside the car, it runs out of the car, and the question then is, what is the final velocity in that case, and there actually is a slight difference. So let's see if we can figure that out. So for the first part, we're going to use the equation where P initial equals P final, which means that the mass of the water times the initial velocity of the water in the x direction plus the mass of the train times the initial velocity of the train must equal the mass of the water plus the mass of the train times the final velocity, which is what we're looking for. So we know, though, that this is going to be equal to zero because there's no initial velocity in the x direction for the train. So zero plus the mass of the train times the initial velocity of the train must equal m plus big M times v final, which means that v final is equal to the mass of the car times the initial velocity divided by the total mass of the rain plus the car. And so it would be equal to 10,000 kilograms times 2 divided by 1,000 plus 10,000, like this. And so V final is equal to, and let's see what that's equal to. That's 20,000 divided by 11,000 equals, and it's 1.82 meters per second. All right, now for the second part of the problem, we have to take into account that the water Still the same amount, the same amount of time. 1,000 kilogram will not accumulate in the railroad car. It will run out. But before it can run out, it must gain the same speed that the railroad car has. Now the railroad car will start at two meters per second, but over time it will go slower and slower because of the water entering the car, taking momentum away from the car. So that means that if we were to graph the velocity over time, it will kind of look like this. So the railroad car will start at the velocity of 2 meters per second and over time will decrease to a lower final velocity, which is what we're looking for. So how do we think about that? Well, remember that the impulse, so what's happening is that the water will get accelerated to the, to the, uh, the velocity of the railroad car quite quickly, it's kind of like impulse, and that will then act in the opposite direction of the motion of the railroad car slowing it down. So what we can look at is this. We can say that uh, this impulse is equal to the force times the time. And in this particular case, if we take a small amount of water that enters the railroad car, that will cause a small amount of impulse, di, and that will therefore cause a force times a small amount of time, dt. Now, the impulse will be in the opposite direction of the motion of the car. So, we have the impulse on the water, which, which will cause a negative, negative direction on the force, so we need a negative sign for that. And then the i can be expressed in terms of, let's see, that would be the mass times uh, dt, so that would be, uh, uh, impulse would be change of velocity, so that would be uh, uh, dm times the velocity, so it would be whatever the velocity is of the car times the small amount of mass that enters the railroad car, we need a minus sign, equals the force. The force will be the mass of the railroad car times the acceleration times dt. And then we can rewrite acceleration in terms of dv dt. So we can write minus dm times v is equal to the mass of the railroad car times dv dt times dt, and then you can see that the dt's cancel out. And then I want to combine the, the velocity, so I have a minus dm 
is equal to the mass of the railroad car times dv over v. And now what I can do is I can integrate both sides. The mass will go from zero to one-tenth the mass of the car because the water that enters the railroad car is 1,000 kilogram. The railroad car is 10,000 kilograms, so it's one-tenth the total mass. And the velocity will go from v initial, which is 2, to v final, like this. So that means that minus m from 0 to 0 0.1 m is equal to m times the natural log of v evaluated from 2 to v final. And if we plug in the upper limit here, we get, uh, we plug in the lower limit, we get nothing. So this is minus 0 0.1 m is equal to m times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get the natural log of v final, and when we plug in the lower limit, we get the natural log of 2. So the first thing I want to do is probably, um, probably get rid of the m's. I can cancel out the m's on both sides. So let's come over here and see what we end up with now. So we have minus 0 0.1 is equal to the natural log of v final minus the natural log of 2. So I can move this across the other side. So I have minus 0 0.1 plus the natural log of 2 equals the natural log of v final. Since I'm looking for v final, I can go ahead and raise both to the, make that the exponent of e, so take the antilog, so I have e to the minus 0 0.1 plus the natural log of 2 is equal to e to the natural log of v final. And this can be broken up. This can be written as e to the minus 0 0.1 times e to the natural log of 2 is equal to v final. And of course, e to the natural log of 2 is simply 2. So this can be written as 2 times e to the minus 0 0.1 equals v final, or v final is equal to 2 divided by e to the 0 0.1. So that would be the final velocity of the railroad car after one ton of water, 1,000 kilometers of water, has rained into the railroad car and, of course, escaped to the little hole in the bottom. So with my calculator here, I take 2 divided by 0.1, make that the exponent, and that equals 1.81 meter per second. So V final equals 1.81 meter per second which is therefore the final velocity of the railroad car if all the rain falls into the car but escapes at the bottom of the car as opposed to what the initial velocity would be if all the rain falls into the car and remains inside the car. Not a lot of difference, but notice how interesting it is to find the actual final velocity realizing that there's mass coming in, a small amount of mass per unit time, and that causes an acceleration which can be written as dv dt and then by taking the integral of both sides integrating over all the rainwater entering the car and how it changes the velocity of the car then we can actually calculate the final velocity that way and so it's an interesting uh, problem with an interesting solution and that is how it's done